politics, it's, you said yourself, some people are very sceptical about politics, it's not the most popular profession. So you're giving people the opportunity to get involved. But why should they get involved? They should get involved because in any democracy you have to have political parties, um, you have to make sure that as far as possible MPs and members of your government come from as many backgrounds as you possibly can, they've got different life experiences and they bring to policy making and governance that sense of connection with people's everyday lives and I think one of the reasons that people feel disconnected from politics is that increasingly they think MPs don't look like me, they don't talk like me, they haven't lived a life like mine. And what I'm trying to do is to show that people from all walks of life can come and work here, get involved in politics and public life and make a difference. So is there like a specific type that you particularly wanted to have involved in the scheme, like for example, working class or female or minorities? Uh, well, the only criteria that we set was basically that you were from a low-income background and you wouldn't have the means to be able to either come to London, uh, put a roof over your head, uh, work for nothing, which unfortunately too many um, MPs still expect people to work for nothing, which is ridiculous and it's wrong in my view. Um, so the, the criteria is very open. Some people have got degrees, some people haven't. They range in age from 19 to 50. Um, they're all so different and that's what makes the scheme so exciting. And it's interesting to see that there's older people on the scheme as well. I mean, it's, it's never too late to be involved in politics, is it? Absolutely not. And um, actually, when you're that little bit older, maybe you've got some wisdom, a bit of life experience, a bit of common sense, and politics could certainly do with that. Did you make any <laughs> any mistakes when you first asked out in politics? Oh, I think we all do um, when we're young and we're passionate and you know we're driven. Um, I'm sure that, that, that we all make mistakes, we say the wrong thing in the wrong company. Um, but you know, you live and learn, I think, in, in, in your own personal political development. But the important thing is that you, you have to be passionate about what you want to change. I said to the Social Mobility Foundation who did the recruitment that what I wanted was people not necessarily already in a political party, but absolutely passionate about social change. Something's wrong, I want to put it right. You know, that's how you how you get people really engaged with politics. So we recently had uh, Nick Clegg who's been talking about his army for inspiration, things like that, and he's very much taken social mobility as a cause. But how supportive has he been of the scheme? Well, it, it made me smile actually because he put um, our scheme in his social mobility strategy but didn't give us any money. Um, so on the floor of the house I, I challenged the government and said it's great that we're in your strategy but it'd be even better if you put your money where your mouth is. And now the government have just commissioned three places for people from low income backgrounds but also with disabilities. Uh, and that's the first bit of government money into our scheme and I think it's quite a you know, stamp of approval so I'm really pleased. So what are some of the the stories of the people involved, I mean, what's, is there anyone you're particularly proud of that they might never have had the chance to have come in and get involved? Well, I'm proud of all of them um, because they're all very different, um, but they're all absolutely passionate. We've not had a single person drop out of the scheme, uh, even though it's not the easiest thing to do to uproot yourself and come to London. Uh, Kay, who works with me, she's got a five-year-old little boy. Uh, she brought him to London. He's in primary school. Um, you imagine that. The, the, when she came for her interview, it was the first time she'd ever been to London. Um, we've got Abdul, who was kidnapped at the age of eight in Liberia, forced to be a child soldier in the Civil War, and he wants to go back to Africa and make politics less brutal. Wow, you know, James, unemployed joiner on a Glasgow building site, couldn't get a job, come down here, worked eight months with Edmund, and so it's, it's just amazing. Amazing story, isn't it? Um, so, it's, it's important to sort of get the experience beforehand, and so your colleague Paul Flynn recently published his book, How to Be an MP, and what would be your top tip on how to be an MP? Well, the first thing I always say to people who um, come along and they say to me, Hazel, how do I get to be an MP, I want to be an MP, and I ask them one question, do you want this more than anything else you want in the world? Because if you don't, stop now. Um, because the one thing you need is stamina, determination, tenacity, you just have to keep at it. It took me 12 years to get to Parliament. You know, I didn't get slotted into a safe seat from somebody that you know, was my patron. Um, and I think that if, if you keep at it and you're passionate enough, then you will get through. In terms of how to be an MP, keep grounded, keep in touch with the people out there who sent you here on their behalf and never ever forget that you're not here because of yourself, you're here because those people have given you their phone and their trust. Um, and is there anything holding the organisation back? I mean, where do you see it going? 
Well, I've spent the last um, 18 months literally going out and um, pitching to all kinds of people to try and get enough money to pay um, the people on placement a proper wage. And they get paid a proper wage, they have help with housing, um, and it's, it's hard work. And the more funds that I get in, the more opportunities we can offer. So if there's anybody out there who's passionate about social justice, who wants to see Parliament look different in the future, then you know, please do get in touch, yeah. um, because that's the only barrier to us making this bigger and better. What's your top tip on how to be an MP? I think it's just to be true to yourself, you know, where, know where you stand on the issues, but of course you're going to be influenced by a lot of groups, other MPs, and constituents, but as long as you know where you stand on the issues, just be true to yourself. How to be an MP? Uh, work a lot. <laughs> it's definitely not a 9-to-5 position. Um, so and sleepless nights and thinking about things when you're out of the office and not having a life outside these walls. <laughs> is, is that good? Uh, it's good, yeah. Um, because this is uh, politics is my passion, so I don't notice it so much. What's the most important thing you've heard about how to be an MP? Um, well, about how to be an MP, for me, one of the most important things is helping people and actually trying to make a difference. Um, that's one of the things that I've learned in the time I've been here. And what's it like working for Miller Band? It's an excellent working for Ed. You very much feel like I'm at the centre of everything that's happening. You know, whenever something happens, we have to react to it right away. The staff have all been amazing, and Ed himself has been absolutely excellent. Supported the scheme so much and helped me so much throughout my time here as well. I think if you're going to be an MP, then you need to not lose your identity. It's very easy to do when you come to Westminster. There is a stigma of Westminster type. Um, and I think just don't lose yourself and just represent the people that you come here to represent.